Okay, we're gonna call the meeting to order. If we could all rise, please, and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Flag is right there. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Welcome to the October yes. Borough Board. If we can all look in our packets, the minutes are in there. And if I can entertain a motion to accept the minutes. Dan Castorina first, Brendan Lantry second. Okay. Um, we have not had any correspondence. Mm -hmm. Is there any old business? Do we have any old business? No. Mm -hmm. Any new business? Um, actually, just, just one thing I would just okay. note is uh, council members uh, Ignizio, Matteo, and Rose are going to be hosting along with DYCD on Tuesday uh, at the JCC, an information session on, um, on those organizations receiving uh, discretionary funding in the fiscal year 15 budget that, that interact with DYCD. So that's going to be at the JCC on mm -hmm. Manor Road on Tuesday uh, at 530. Okay. Those are organizations that are already yeah, I mean, it's open to everybody. So okay. if, let's say organizations that you know of that may be looking to apply for that kind of funding in the future. but. Um, but specifically those organizations that received the funding for this year. They're going through the contract process now, have a lot of questions, concerns. So DYCD staff is going to be there to answer any of those questions. Great. Okay, and mm -hmm. I'll pass it on too to some other people. Okay, we do have a presentation today. It's from a group called Commune, which is a social, social and data specialist group. They work out of the Center for Social Innovation and they've developed a new tool to try and help increase civic engagement in New York City. Um, they're going to give a brief presentation. Um, they were coming over from Brooklyn, though, so uh, we'll give them a little extra time. Mm -hmm. But we have the official uh, business out of the way, so um, I guess we'll just temporarily adjourn until they get here. From Commune. From Thank you. That's correct. Thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be out here in Staten Island. I've been, I used to work out here quite a bit. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. But first, I, I, I am here tonight to discuss what we call Commune, which is a crowd-driven civic engagement um, platform uh, that allow, that collects and sorts local activities and decision-making processes, making it possible for anybody with a smartphone to instantly access and engage with those local activities and decision-making processes with a, an array of digital tools, okay? Our primary mission is to provide access and transparency um, to civic endeavors in the, in the public sphere uh, so, that, uh, so, that, so that by creating and maintaining a digital access layer between local government and civil society on one side and residents on the other, um, I'm hoping that perhaps you may have heard of Commune, um, uh, although I wouldn't be surprised if not yet. We've been discussing Commune across the city with various um, community boards, city council members, borough president's offices, technology people. Um, I'm sure you're aware that New York City is quite, has become quite an important laboratory in a way for a variety of what people popularly refer to as apps. But Commune we like to think of as a, as a platform. It's not just an app. Now, most people would recognize it as an app that they would get on their cell phone, but it's a lot more. As I said, it collects and sorts local activities um, and decision-making processes, which are uh, supplied by the crowd. What we call the crowd is basically any typical user, anybody with a smartphone. Um, but I want to start by talking to you a little bit about who I am and the team, our team, and then I'll get into what what, what Commune is really all about. Um, as I said, we are pre preparing and, and displaying it and presenting it to a variety of places, so hopefully this won't be the first time you hear about it, and, and, and hopefully not the last. <laughs> um, first of I was uh, I worked on housing issues for the city of New York for a number of years. In fact, I came out to Staten Island quite often to work with landlords and tenants um, on housing law issues. I was, with a, I was the assistant director of an outfit that you may have heard of. It was once known as Citywide Task Force on Housing Court. Um, today it's known as Housing Court Answers, and it's a very valuable 
um, outfit. I still keep in touch with people there. Um, I've since moved on. I, I took a, a, a new job with USAID overseas as a director of communications for their um, activities in West Africa, which was quite a change from New York City. But I came back after um, a number of years there. And, um, and this is all to say that civic engagement was always a very, very big part of the activities and the kind of stuff that I was involved in. Um, as you all know, um, and as the, the, actually, I was interested to see today Carmen Farina in her comments about, you know, revamping the schools and addressing the schools issues. Um, she said something that I'm sure all of us can understand and immediately identify with, which is that participation, despite all the fanfare we make over democracy in this country, participation in local elections is minuscule. Less than 20% of people vote in elections. And we all know, and, I, and there's actually data we can, I can show you, um, that shows that participation in local activities in New York City is, is, is virtually insignificant. Less than 8% of New Yorkers describe themselves as involved in local activities, local government. It's really um, quite astonishing, given the importance of the work that community boards, borough president's offices, civil, uh, uh, city council members are doing day in and day out. There really is not uh, as much engagement as one would expect, and certainly not as much as we all would hope. Um, the foundation of this country, not to get on any kind of soapbox, is democracy. Um, and the very first thing that I learned doing housing activities in New York City was that lots of times people just don't know what's going on. They don't know that there's a meeting about it. They don't know that people are discussing an issue. And, and, and that's just the first part, right? I mean, it's one thing to be informed about the issue. It's another just to know that people are discussing it. And we're not even getting to that. So that's one, one element of the, what led to the development of Commune. Um, there's a group of us, uh, about eight people involved in Commune now we started at an outfit called the Center for Social Innovation. Um, it's an incubator um, that was set up with help from the city, but a lot also from the tech industry to allow engineers and other people thinking about technology and how to use technology to better effect uh, in various ways. So you've got a variety of different um, uh, startups that are incubated by, by the Center for Social Innovation. And our group was very dedicated to the idea of civic engagement. Um, people like me had direct experience. When we'd come out and we'd say, okay, um, the, the, the small property owner in Staten Island, very typically, you know, all of a sudden just locks a tenant out of the apartment at, or hasn't ha doesn't have a, a, a certificate of occupancy, um, you know, whatever it may be, just basic ignorance. We'd come out and do a workshop and you'd think, given the volume of the cases we would see in the housing courts or reported to us by the Department of Buildings or HPD, that we would get a, you know, a lot of people. And you know, maybe five people would show up, five landlords. Now, our hotline got a lot more calls. And we would deal with probably 100 to 200 calls a week from Staten Island landlords and tenants seeking assistance. And they could be from the NYCHA buildings or you know, whatever type of building you may have. But my direct experience working with people in those situations was again that people just didn't know what the situation was and then when you tried to reach out to them to explain oh here's your rights here's what you need to know uh, about the law uh, the turnout was very bad and and routinely we would hear the th same thing that I'm sure you hear all the time which is well if I had known about the meeting <laughs> I would have been there if I had known you were discussing the noise situation on my street or a new bar going in on down the block or skateboarders or whatever the problem is, whatever the issue is, or the school, whatever, right? I would have been there. And let's take people on their word and, and just assume that the word's not getting out. And as a matter of fact, as I went around and discussed uh, this piece of technology before we had developed it, um, long before it had a face, um, routinely one of the things we heard people say to us was, you know, um, I remember walking into an office, a, a city council member, and I heard this so many times. Um, I'll leave him unnamed, but in any case, he uh, said he had come out of a meeting. He said, oh, geez, you know, something went wrong. I'm sorry we're starting late. And I said, well, what happened? He said, well, a constituent was yelling at us. And I said, why? He said, well, we didn't show up in a meeting. And I said, well, what happened? He said, well, they sent an email, you know, a month ago to tell us about a meeting that was last Tuesday night. There was no reminder and da, da, da. It wasn't such a huge group that they have a newsletter or anything. It was just another one of these instances where someone didn't know about a meeting and wasn't aware of what was happening right around them. So that's where we stepped in with technology. Um, we realized that technology is becoming increasingly, increasingly specialized. 
And of course, now smartphones are more and more common. So we, we decided to develop a platform, and what it allows you to do, as I said in the beginning, it collects and sorts local activities and decision-making processes that are sourced from the crowd. In other words, people can upload, and we've made a very interesting um, interface to allow anybody in the community to upload an event notice. And it's only for public sphere stuff. We're not talking about entertainment and shows and all that. We're very much engaged, or, you know, we're very much focused on civic engagement. And so what we've done is we've gone around and we've piloted it with civic, uh, civic groups because we keep improving it. And what it allows you to do, you can get it in the App Store if you have an iPhone. It, it's called Commune, C-O-M-M-U-N-E. It allows you to see immediately, based on your location, it allows you to see exactly what's going on around you. It'll pop up meetings based on your interests. So if you put in, it will just pop up meetings. You don't put any interest in. It'll just pop up things going on around you within the area, let's say within a mile radius any meeting going on. Now then you can layer, then, then the, the activities are tagged by education, environment, health, uh, uh, you know, could be um, uh, buildings, uh, parks, whatever you would tag as an interest, it'll pop up those meetings. And so you'll get a notification that there's a meeting going on. And then what it allows you to do is to see, it, to the extent that someone is willing to put in this information, it'll allow you to see what people are discussing at these meetings. Um, and that's just the basic, the, that's the first set of data that we get. Um, no one else is doing this. Um, we've done a lot of research about how people find out about meetings. And generally, people are still using the old tools, emails, websites. They go to websites. Um, you know, they get messages uh, uh, maybe from a friend. You know, they hear it from a friend. So what we've done is we've made it as easy as possible for people to put this on a, thing, on a, on a platform. And we're working with city council. Um, through participatory budgeting process and and now through a special initiative we have with community boards we've worked with city council and and we do believe that we're we're, we're going to be introducing this as a as a platform for city administrators and city city electeds across across of course in all five bor boroughs um, and so we hope you'll see it soon like that um, in any case we believe it's very simple to use and once we have all this data in one place and we already have a lot of it because we've been piloting it with these uh, civil society groups across the city, then um, that data becomes immensely valuable to people like yourselves in the situation, in the position of having to assess and determine what people are really discussing across the city. Um, one of the most interesting things that I've seen come out of it from the data side is that um, having been a former journalist in years past, um, uh, we can create a heat map of what people are talking about across the city of New York. So when people put up these activities and they put up the agendas of meetings, we can actually sort of map out what kind of issues people are discussing. So of course, as an elected representative, I'm sure many of your friends or colleagues, if you're not elected yourself, will be able to say, okay, you know, what are people talking about in my community? And we can narrow that down to a, to a block level. Like what kind of meetings are happening? What are people talking about? Now the other way people get that information in politics is simply to do polls. Uh, and I, I, I know enough to know that that's very expensive. Um, this allows you, and that's just a snapshot, right? That's just one day, one month, maybe once every six months, right? Uh, given the poll. Uh, this is in real time and it's constant. And we can provide a dashboard to organizations to allow them to see this data and, and manipulate it and use it. So the reason I was here tonight is because we, we want to make sure you're aware of this development and we want to, to the extent that we can, um, bring you on board to use it with, this, with the community boards. So I talked to Marie and, and said, we would love to present this so all the community boards in New York City know about this opportunity. Now we're talking to community boards in Manhattan and the Bronx. Um, I'll do another presentation like this in Brooklyn and Queens um, in the coming months and coming weeks. Um, so we really want to make sure that people know about it and are aware that this is available. Um, I do hope that if you do have an iPhone, um, and we are developing the Android version, but it's coming slowly because we don't have a lot of money. Uh, but but uh, I do hope that you'll um, download it and try it out because uh, we think that it really does make it very easy. And the groups that we've worked with say it's, has, it's been very effective for them. Um, one of the things that we promised the civil society groups, just to give you an idea of the practical application, is that we'll increase their engagement by at least 10%. And we've lived up to that. So uh, Lower East Side Ecology Center is one of our um, piloters, uh, pilot groups. Um, Rockaway, Far Rockaway has a, a youth group that's a pilot group. 
and they're on it and they're using it. And the kids are, you know, the most tremendous at using it. And they've been able to share information, like what's happening, meetings they're going to have. And they've increased the number of people coming to their meetings. So that's really what it's all about. And that, at the end of the day, that's, that's ultimately our, our, our goal. Because we know that at, at the end of the day, that's what counts, is that people have to be involved. And, and, and so that's what we provided. So thank you very much. I don't know if you have any questions or you'd like to know more. Right now? We probably have, uh, right now, the latest figure I saw was about 3,000. How many community boards? We've talked to about half a dozen community boards. No, there, we don't have like a, a complete sign on yet, but that's because we didn't have, one of the things community boards came back to us with, which was really important, was a very easy to use editor that they could upload their activities with. What we had done before, just to give you an idea of the technology, is we were scraping websites to get activities, and we still do that. In other words, there's a little piece of software you can write that will go and go onto websites and wherever, most people when they put up an activity, it goes into a database. Even if that database isn't immediately visual on the website, you might just see it as a nice announcement. There's a database behind that with fields and those fields can be scraped by a piece of software running. So we would just, we, we visit, for example, the parks department and we scrape it and we get the dates, times, and all those events then go into our, our, into our database and then it presents it on the phone so that you can see it right away. So the community boards needed a better editor. So we've just finished up developing that and it actually has gone out. And that's why we're working with the city council on using this with the entire city because it's a, it's a very, very um, user-friendly editor. It allows you to, it's called what you see is what you get. Oh, it's a WYSIWYG editor. So it's very simple to use. Anybody can like figure it out in about two seconds. Yeah, most people would look at it and say this is a smartphone app. Yes, it's iPhone right now. I would say six months. It's it all comes down to to our budgeting. Yeah. So that in your for profit organization or five We're we're for profit, and the reason we developed it like that at, at the Center for Social Innovation in order to scale it up um, we really need to be able to get investors um, we can't deal with um, you know we're not going to be able to get a grant large enough to scale right. so that's the reason for that and do you interface with um, other social media outlets like Facebook oh yeah yeah um, I, I didn't get I, I if I had the chance to show you on the phone one of the things that the, it allow, the app allows you to do is to share the information of any activity that you see. You can share it, you know, you can click on a little icon to email it, to put it on Facebook, to tweet it, to, uh, it, I think there's another, a couple other like social platforms you can put it on. And you can do that very easily. You can also comment on the activity. So there's a comment field. So that information would also be collected by whoever, whatever group has put up that activity. And there's also an opportunity to RSVP for it, if that's something that the organizer wants to do. What, what do we do with it or what do we? Oh, well, we're looking for the dates and times of an activity, the title, um, the location. All of the, all of the information we put in the database is geotagged. So when someone does have it on their smartphone, if they do say, I want to go to this meeting, there's a geotag for it. So yeah, yeah, specific to that event so that they can click on it and map it. So, you know, that's always an issue. Like people will often <laughs> say, well, where is the activity, right? So mm -hmm. it geotags it. So geo date and time, title, location. And then we're part of the editor that we've worked on with city council is to have a, um, is to have a, basically an agenda. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you asked that because I, I, it would have been bad of me to forget to tell you. It's, it's www.commune.io.io. .io. 
and that has you know a, a variety of information we have a blog on there where we've been writing about how we developed it it'll give you a, a richer sort of a richer story of like and, and it gives you all the names of all the all of the um, team members we have some data scientists from NYU they're working on the data on the on what I call the heat map which I think is one of the most interesting applications of this data set is that you can, like I said, you can make a, a map of what people are talking about in the city. I'm using it. That's an interesting idea. What we actually, I was at a meeting with one of the the education councils in Manhattan about a month ago, and they're going to pilot it just like one of our one of our um, one of the community organizations has done. Like some of the organizations I talked about, Rockaway and and in Lower East Side Ecology Center and Transportation Alternatives, they're piloting it with their membership. But um, you know, we hadn't gone directly to school students. So that's a very interesting idea. I like that idea. Just one other question. You said you partnered with the city council? Um, yeah. What component of the city council? We talked to, we've been talking to Councilmember Grodnick's office, Councilmember Kalos's office, um, and the technology committee members. Um, we're, Vaca. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Mr. Vaca and, and others. And what we're doing is we're talking to them about, you know, the, there's an interface right now for meetings. I'm sure are you familiar, you must For be familiar. Meetings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's, it, yeah, yeah, and it's a bit clunky, and yes. it, it's somewhat difficult Fair. to use. <laughs> and so, so you know, we're we're sort of. I mean, I'm not sure how public I want to be about, it, but we're basically pitching this as an alternative to that. It's okay. much easier to use. It's much more effective. And we had talked to um, staff of the previous uh, speaker, and she had apparently at one point her office told us that they had four people. Who would go around to city council members' offices every week to figure out what was going, what they were up to, what meetings they were going to, so that they could help by, you know, showing up at those meetings if, if they wanted the speaker to attend and something like that. So we like to think that, you know, that just shows you how sort of, to some degree, inefficient the other system was. Is that they actually had four staff people going to ask, you know, what's happening at these at, in your in your district. It's it's really inefficient. Well, <laughs> you're wondering how are we going to make it? <laughs> we have a few ideas on that. When we came together, I have to be honest, our civic engagement passion sort of overrode our ideas as, as business people. But our, the co-founder, myself and, and Michael are the co-founders, and Michael has an MBA and he's working on that aspect and he had found investment money. And our hope uh, basically is to um, create a dashboard for organizations that would that they would be willing to pay for, in other words, yeah, to get a richer, um, richer uh, uh, engagement with the data. Um, I mentioned the data map, you know, that shows you what's happening in the city. We could we we expect that that we could probably charge for that because we think it would be more valuable than polling. We think it would be it could be as valuable as polling and probably more so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there would be civic-based organizations that um, we already talked to, uh, you know, certain community-based organizations that, that love the idea of a dashboard to see, you know, what's working for their marketing, for example. You know, so if they're having an activity and only three people show up, but they wasted $1,000 putting the, the effort together. These are nonprofit organizations. And even though, you know, nonprofits get a bad name for like being inefficient, you know, they do want to use their money wisely and they want to know what's working in terms of outreach. So we'll be able to deliver that with our dashboard. We'll be able to tell them, look, you know, uh, you've got 15 people RSVP'd for this event. You might want to consider canceling it if, if that's not enough for, you know, the reason you're putting it on. On the other hand, by creating more opportunity to engage with their potential members, by having people RSVP, then they can get that information to, uh, to reach out to those people again in the future. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you very much.